recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. We just described Ric Flair as the NFL <laughs> man and player of the games. <laughs> Chris. Yo, we going down to Sesame Street. <laughs> that's, that's your impression of hardcore rap? No. <laughs> Carmella. That would irritate the hell out. I'm like, I just want my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> my ice cream is melting. <laughs> ben. ben. Four halogens in that list. It was, oh, oh, my God. You were like, it's not the halogens. I'm like, no, Ben, no. Those damn halogens got me again. <laughs> and the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan and I am here today with Mr. Ben Young. Hello, Ben. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, sir. I'm here with Mr. Chris Hollister. Hello, Chris. Hey, it's good to be back. I'm not going to say good morning like Ben does because somebody might be listening to this in the evening time. You never know. It, they could be like, wait, why are they saying good morning? It's not morning for me. He was saying good morning to me, Chris. Whatever, man. He is saying hello to the world. Oh, my God. Hello, world. <laughs> we have two amazing guests today. Mr. Dan Felsenheld is with us today. Hello, Dan. Hello, I'm so happy to be on the show. Outstanding. And first timer Kate Goodwin is with us today. Hello, Kate. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to the show. I want to get to know both of you a little bit better. We'll start with Dan. Dan, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Oh, boy, the pressure is on. Well, I'm from, well, I live in Arlington, Virginia. I'm not originally from here, from New Jersey. Shout out to the Garden State. Something fun about myself. Well, one of the things we're doing is we're raising a puppy for Guiding Eyes for the Blind. So we've had Cam, Cam as the name of our puppy. She's now 14 months old, and eventually she'll be going up to uh, for training to become a hopefully become a guide dog. If she flunks out of that, we might get to have her as a pet. But we're hoping she's uh, she does like to work. So what kind of dog? It's a it's a yellow lab. Oh, that's she's that's very great sweet. Work. She's 60 pounds now too. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Both a guide dog and a protector. Love it. That's yes. right. All right, Kate, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. I'm Kate Goodwin. I'm from Kearney, Nebraska, which is right in the dead center of the state of Nebraska. And I'm a dentist. Ooh. I work with my dad. I've got three little kids that keep me pretty busy all the time. <laughs> They're seven, five, and three. So it's a wild wow. life at my house. Wow. They outnumber you. Yes, they do. <laughs> what is your least favorite thing to do in your work as a dentist? Anything when someone's in pain oh, yeah. is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I've had far more than my fair share of extensive <laughs> dental work. Jonathan, would it be fair to say that you put uh, your dentist kids through college with your dental work? I mean, I definitely helped. I have, I have <laughs> 12 crowns. I have at least four root canals. I have, I mean, half of the teeth in my mouth are not, they're not homegrown. You know what I mean? I'm trading, I'm trading from the, from the other teams. Job security right there. That's right. That's yeah, no. <laughs> they, they like Jonathan, to keep me happy. Let me tell you. Jonathan, have you considered dentures at this point? I, mean, I have considered dentures. Engineer. I've considered Don't implants too, but I'm, I'm sticking with what I'm doing right now. As long as I can do it, I'm going to do it the way I'm doing it. I've had my share of crowns and I've got, I broke one of my molars just have an implant and my wow. daughter actually just had to have a root canal last year she's only she's 19 now oh so wow she had to have a root canal which is unusual but Damn. i um i haven't been to the dentist since the bush administration <laughs> what? Oh. which bush administration ben oh the the older bush. Oh, the older <laughs> bush oh my god yes ben yeah i'm, I'm overdue do you floss? Uh, <laughs> yeah I'll... you must floss Holy every day cow. That's what you get when you um, floss? So, well, no comment. It's got a great smile. That's the crazy part. It's just like, how are your teeth not falling out, mister? Man. Some people have all the luck. Unbelievable. Yes. Good, good jeans? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> all I right. Know. Are so, they comfortable jeans? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is episode number 302, and we're going to get started with Warm It Up Chris. It's time to warm it up. 
of trivial warfare today. And there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA, and that's Chris. And sometimes Jonathan. And today's warm up, Chris, is brought to you by Ben Young. So, Ben, take it away. Oh, okay. Thank you for literally steering, stealing my thunder, Chris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the warming up Chris question is brought to us today by Amir Ashraf. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank Amir. you, Amir. That, that's the first you, Amir. time for awesome. Amir, I think. And uh, just as a shout out, you, you can always go to trivialwarfare.com and submit questions to us. We love using your questions on the show. So if you have questions you want to ask, just send them to trivialwarfare.com. There is a, a link to show you how to do that on there. What Ben said. So what I have for the warming up Chris today is a list of inventions and technological innovations. And I want each of you to tell me whether they were created during or as a direct result of World War One or World War Two. Oh, huh, OK. That sounds oh, okay. cool. So it's time based. Cool. Yes. OK. All right. So I'm going to go clockwise from my Skype window. So, Dan, I'm going to start with you. You get the ballpoint pen. Was that invented during World War One or World War Two? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to say World War One. Correct answer is World War II. Oh. It was invented by a journalist, Laszlo Biro, um, and used by the British Royal Air Force. Oh, yeah. Oh, Biro is another name for a, a British name for a pen. Sure. Yep. Am I? Right. You know what? Ballpoint pens made me think about um, outer space, and maybe it's because I just watched or just read The Martian. Do ballpoint pens not work in outer space? Am I remembering this correctly? They have those special space pens, though, that do work in space. Because, like, the executed. weightlessness keeps the ink from getting to the tip of the pen, I think. Yeah, there, there's a running joke that says that the United States has spent, like, six or seven million dollars developing a pen that you can write with in space. Instead of the just- Russians. The rest just use pencils. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, United States. Jonathan, you get the jet engine. The jet engine. I am listening. I, I, I can't really say I'm listening to the podcast. Uh, Hardcore History comes out like once a year at this point. And I just listened <laughs> to the most recent episode. And it's a World War II based um, theme for the last couple of years. And um, it seemed like they already had jets. They they were already doing the flying fortresses by the by the middle to end of the war. They had um, the Hornets. They had the Mustangs. The Zeros were out there already. Uh, there's no way. Uh, it has to be World War One. Quick answer is World War Two. Damn it! Oh, <laughs> I think that so they have been developing the technology for a long time. But according to Amir, the technology was successfully used by the Germans in the Me Two Sixty Two. I think that was one of their bombers. Are we saying that? It, it was – I thought the context was invented as a result of, but the way you just used that sounded like first used. And that was, those are different thoughts. So according to Amir, the technology was successfully used by the Germans in the ME-262 toward the end of World War II. The comment that I was making is that they had been developing – the tech because remember world war ii started in like the 30s in germany Mm -hmm. they had been far along developing the technology but from what i remember from from reading previously they could have probably like debuted it earlier but maybe they were wanting to do more testing something maybe maybe i'm just misunderstanding what a jet engine is versus different types of engines that's probably more of what it is okay yeah, I'll, I'll, ex- I'll accept you being wrong. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't they have mostly biplanes in, in World War One? Yeah. That's like with the prop planes. All right, Chris, you get radar. Radar. Uh, if we're talking about O'Reilly, that would be the Korean War. Nothing? Nothing at all? Wow. No, I was drinking coffee, but I agree with you. I think that's all a right, legit answer. You. All right, so radar. Hmm. I'm going to say World War One. Correct answer is World War Two. Dang it! <laughs> yeah. We have a trend. World War II, we have a trend. Oh, for so far. Eight, yeah, yeah. The next answer is World War One. All right. Got it. Got it. So, technology game, was perfected by the, by the British during the Battle of Britain. Man, Kate, you get drones. Drones. Oh crap! <laughs> Gosh, this is hard. All those, all I'll those World War One guesses. I'll give you a hint. Okay, I'm ready. So drones here in this definition means the first aerial torpedo. Oh, well, I'm going to I'm going to guess World War One. <laughs> Various experiments are carried out, but the first aerial torpedo was launched in 1918. World War One. Good job. Way to stick with the plan. <laughs> Don't deviate. Stay on target. Dan, you get daylight savings time. Oh, oh, 
Well, that was originally, I mean, I, I know daylight savings time was originally because like the, uh, like for harvesting in the fields and stuff like, oh, they were trying to save money, right? So were they trying to save money during World War One or World War Two? is the question. I'm going to say World War One. Quick dance is World War One. Good job. Yes. Nice. nice. All right. So the theory for daylight saving was actually introduced by Benjamin Franklin in the 18th century, but it was first implemented by Germany in April 1916 as a measure to conserve coal. Oh, oh they current? did more work during the day by following the day. Right. Jonathan, you get trench coats. I'm going World War I because that's when trenches were invented. <laughs> I'm sure trenches existed prior to World War I. Not, not in warfare. <laughs> but correct answer is World War I. Good job. Yeah, World War I was the first use of trench warfare. Trench warfare, yeah. yeah. Yes, you said when trenches were invented. <laughs> I mean, it's, yes. Yeah, I'm sticking with my statement. I'm pretty sure they had aqueducts in Rome. Okay. Yes, this was used by British officers in trenches. That's Are those? Trenches. I mean, aqueducts all aren't all ducks uh, swimming in water? Honestly, that's true. Yeah, Chris, you get photocopying. Photocopying. Okay, so the first three we're going to do a little of Jonathan's old school game theory. The first three were World War Two. Trademark. The second three were World War One. I'm going to have to say World War Two on this one. Photocopying invented in World War II. Oh, yes. game theory for the win. <laughs> yep. The technology was called xerography with an X, developed and eventually patented in 1937. Kate, you get uh, penicillin, and specifically, when penicillin was made stable for clinical use. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that's World War One. Correct answer is World War II. Oh, oh follow the Lit trend. Up. Yes. I know, I know. <laughs> they had by Australian scientist Howard Florey. Prevented all the soldiers from getting the clap, I guess, right? Yes. <laughs> clap on, clap off. Oh, <laughs> had a totally different song. Just make it clap. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> so this Dan, is where this episode is going right now. Speaking of the clap, Dan, you get the modern zipper. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, wow. well, they had a lot of... I th- I think I'm, I'm going to say World War II because I think the button fly, I think they had like button fly pants and stuff in World War I. I could be wrong. So the, uh, the modern zipper was used by American sailors on money belts and they were designed in 1914. World War I. Oh, the trend is broken. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jonathan, you get Pilates. <laughs> so it's a guy. His name is Joseph Pilates. And I think that he was already doing business. You know what? He, 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 I'm going to go World War II. Um, it was invented by German bodybuilder Joseph Pilates while internment uh, under British control during World War I. Darn it. Oh, oh man. I, his business stuff started around World War II, right after World War II, I think. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I knew what I was going for. I just couldn't get it. You get half a point for identifying the inventor. Appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris, you get helicopters. Okay. Renaissance. <laughs> true. true. Da Vinci. Did, yeah. Da Vinci did do the uh, design for it, uh, but never created one. Let's see. I know they were used uh, for medivacs in, in Korea, So, but we need to go back a little bit before. I'm going to say World War I. Helicopters were developed by the Germans in World War II. Dang it. Mm. I'm out. I'm not warmed, Ben. I'm not warmed up at all. <laughs> Sorry. You have to get me another coat. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe a hat. Oh, that's a yeah, good no. idea. That's, I am that's bald. Not bad. Yep. All right, Kate, you get sanitary pads. Is it because I'm a woman? That's <laughs> <laughs> just how the question is. No, it's because Kate. you're a no, dentist. Come on, jeez. Right? <laughs> I think these are these are deceptive questions because they seem like they should be so easy. You know, I'm going to go with World War II for no um, good reason. Uh, sanitary pads were first invented as a surgical dressing in 1914, World mm. War I. Uh, nurses at the Red Cross found another use for them. I suppose. <laughs> All right, Dan, you get, uh, let's see, where are we? You get super glue. Ooh, super glue. I have an uneven number of questions, but it's okay. Actually, we'll do this as a group because I only have two questions left. <laughs> so you want to do this as a group? Yeah, super glue. Super glue. I don't know, Dan. It's all you. <laughs> <laughs> Put the pressure on me. I mean, there's only two choices. Um, <laughs> I think it's 